Right, okay, I'm talking... There's got to be a token Romanist in, so that's me. <laughs> right, so if you're not familiar with the period, I'm dealing with Roman Britain, so that's pretty much England, Wales, and southern Scotland from mid-first century AD to mid-fifth century um, AD. So, But what I'm dealing with is hordes, so if I just flick... That's these. But the most popular kind that is studied is these coin hordes, which are the best friend of numismatics people. But we also have another category, which is metalwork hordes over there, which is what I'm studying, which are deposits of metal artefacts um, that I'm using the definition that they've got to be found in association, and roughly three or four or more artefacts is what I'm looking at. They can include coins as well, but it can't just be coins on their own. And I'm mapping these across the UK... Um, they're from roughly the 17th century, so the earliest is around 1630 um, till the present day. So the last one at the moment is about 2013 that was discovered. So this is combining quite a lot of data. There's about 300 at the moment. There'll probably be about 600 hordes in total. Uh, so this is combining pre-digital legacy data with modern data and... I'm having quite significant issues with that, as you'll find out. So, This is what is going into my geodatabase, and the issue I've got is I'm having things like antiquarian descriptions, national grid references of varying degrees of accuracy, and modern excavation records all coming together in different thing. In, and they're all different. Some have no map reference and a really good description, so I can locate it, or some have very vague description and can't be closely reconstructed at all. So what I've done is I've got that. So that gives the beautiful illusion that they're all the same. <laughs> um, so what I've done is I've put in, I don't think you can see it very well, but over the sign there's what's called a location field, and that's a coded value to tell me how accurate the spatial data is. So that's all I've got to tell me how good it is, basically. Um, which, and then I can use the data as well, but once I've put it all in, if anyone else is using this database as we hope, it makes it quite difficult because they won't have dealt with the data like me and understand how varied this is. So this is what I've got so far. So all across Britain, there's about 330 at the moment in total. They go from right at the top from the Roman frontier for... Um, till early, just late Iron Age, early Roman sort of uh, transition period. So, I'll explain to you a little bit of how I found these. Now, this Corbridge Hoard, it has no national grid reference, but it's very well located on the excavation plans. And that meant overlaying them with the GIS, I could lo locate it. I think that's within a few metres to just at the corner of that um, building there. And that's because we've got such good satellite imagery for this. Um, and it means that contextually I know quite a lot because the excavation report is so good, you can do quite a lot with that. And this was discovered in the 1980s, so you'd kind of expect that. Now these, a um, little bit different, these are the Silchester hordes, they're both antiquarians. So one was found 1900, one was found 1890, so I can... Un what I've done is I've overlaid the street plan which finds, give you these blocks which are insulate and I'm told where they are by Inchley. So I can roughly know that that one's in Inchley 1, I think that's Inchley 12 or 17, something like that. But that's about, that's all I've got them to. But then that causes a problem of when you look at the excavation plan. So I've got one here, and then one in here. But there's a vast range of different buildings within this. And that's, like, that's causing me issues if I want to do micro-scale analysis of where they are. I don't really know the context of them very well. Um, so I can just say that in there it may be residential, but I, I don't know if they're related to the road, if they're in a building. So that's going to cause quite a few issues with the later analysis. Now this one's Stanek. Um, nice deposit, found in the 1930s. All I can do basically is wave at the map and tell you it's somewhere, somewhere there. Um, <laughs> I've had to, that point there is just the grid reference for Stanek. That's all I've been given. <laughs> so, um, so all I, yeah, which is a little bit frustrating because you'd think 1930s, getting towards the post-antiquarian period, it would be a bit better. 
So there's no hard and fast rule to this, which is more frustrating, because I can't say all the antiquarian ones are going to be poor. Um, this is probably one of the worst ones I've got at the moment um, that I've put in that's more modern. But this causes issues when I show you in its location. So we've got all the scheduled monuments. You've got Hadrian's Wall. You've got the fort. You've got the Roman roads in there. And there's also the non-scheduled monuments. So you've got like civilian settlements, probably a few temples around there. But because I don't know how it relates to this, it's a nice hoard. All the artifacts are well data. I've got lovely drawings, lovely photos of them. But I can't put it in its landscape context particularly well because the grid reference is so poor. So um, these are all ones that are from excavation that I've got that I can sort of ground proof in a way. This is completely different. This is anyone who's worked in Britain will have heard of the portable antiquity scheme. But the thing with this is nobody actually knows when they're put on how good the Griff reference is because it's all based on the often the metal detectress. And we we've got to make the assumption that they're correct. But by talking to people who work in there, there's quite a lot of different types of information you can do. So what I've done, I've taken one good hood that I found, which is on there, which is eight-figure grid reference, looked like the fine liaison officer had gone to the hoard site with the metal detectress. And what I've done is I've put all the different fine locations we know turn out in the portable antiquity scheme in there. And it just shows you how widely it can actually vary. So quite often you get it centering on the field, which is the orange one, so that's not too bad. It's not as accurate as you like. But then we also know that what's been done is they centre them on parish, which is the blue one right down in the corner. And that's going to start if I'm... I want some uh, case studies maybe at county level. If I've got quite a lot of portable antiquity scheme data, because I don't know what's actually been put in, in the metal detectors, I'm never sure how accurate it is which when I'm doing micro scale analysis is going to be cause more difficulties because I'm not I'm never going to be completely confident that that point is exactly where it should be and that's the actual fine spot um, and it's not the patterns I'm seeing aren't just a reproduction of someone's put it in each field center or whatever center area they decide we sometimes just don't know so what I've done to try and deal with this where I can is put in um, data codes. So roughly one, just what it says up there, it's being used for the coin. There's also that I'm part of a coin hub project and they're using the same codes. Um, so hopefully they'll be comparable. And it's just giving an indication of how close I know it is. So poor is less than six figure. Fair is about six figure grid reference. Good, eight, excellent, eight to 10. So what that gives me is when I map it, is it shows that they're turning up. There's no particular concentration of poor data, which is quite nice. But the poor data is about 20%. So I've got this. So then there's this issue of do I just wipe out this poor data? But then that's taken out quite a lot. That's a fifth of my database. Don't particularly want to do that. So I'm trying to figure out at the moment how to respect this issue of I need to add in this data but also deal with the spatial resolution issue and make sure that it doesn't affect the more micro-scale analysis. So we've got a few possible solutions that I'm thinking about. I quite like the idea of weighting it so that the better resolution data is given more emphasis in the analysis so that it will, um, so I can focus more on those. Um, the other thing, possibly remove it, but I don't particularly want to do that at a national level. And maybe that has to be done at a um, county or whatever my regional study case studies are. But as this isn't like people who work on sites. You've got LIDAR, you've got a DEM, you've got aerial imagery where you can see them, which is fantastic. I just have to hope that the data is in the right place because these tours, they don't turn up on any of these. They don't often turn up on geophysics. So the grid references I have, I just have to assume are as correct as possible, and I can't check them in any, any way, which is a bit unusual to a lot of archaeology where you can go and check. So I can't just pay lip service to it because I can't check it. It's not like a um, national mapping data where you can go, put it in, and be like, 
it's been shifted a bit out, I can shift it. I can't do that, which makes it quite difficult because there is this inherent bias in my data, but I can't fix it. Um, so yeah. Okay.